Good morning. How we doing? It's good to see everybody. Everybody, how many of you feel like we're back in winter time? Cold this morning, ain't it? All this rainy weather, but it is good to be here. Glad you are here this morning. I'm excited about today. Wasn't last Sunday such a great message? Yeah, three of them. All right, Pastor, sorry about that. How many of you enjoyed last Sunday's message? Wasn't it such a great message? I've been anticipating this Sunday just to be able to continue in this series and hear what the Lord has for us, but it is good to see you this morning. I'm just ready to worship. How about you? Yeah. Just a few announcements real quick. The first one is it's just right after service. Everybody say right after service. If you are wanting to help with our Good Friday service and volunteer, uh, we're going to meet just real quick, be about 15 minutes down in our youth building. So if you don't know where our youth building is, you'll go out this door, go through the next glass door, and just keep going straight, okay? And then we'll be in our youth room. So if you'd like to be a part of that and be on a part of the volunteer team, uh, we got different teams, uh, please meet me right after service. And then we have a couple of other dates uh, I think it's the 20th, let me check, 20th, yes, pastor told me, uh, uh, we're going to meet over at Pops, so, and then uh, we'll use that as a time of where we're going to just instruct what, exactly how our service is going to go and those that will be volunteer, and then the Wednesday uh, before our Good Friday uh, week, we're going to have a uh, meeting over there where we're just going to spend some time in prayer and praying for our service over there, Amen. All right. Well, can you stand with me this morning? And as you stand, just greet two or three people around you. Tell them it's good to see them this morning. Tell them they look nice. <laughs> Amen. 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 At the end of service, we'll have some more announcements, but we're going to go in to worship and uh, just invite the Holy Spirit into this place. I'm so, I'm so grateful that we're able to be here this morning and just worship together. How many of you? Yeah. Hey, can we just uh, take a moment and just clear our mind? I know I do this often, but there's something about just taking a moment and saying, hey, things that are going on in your life right now, just take a moment and be in the presence of the Lord just for the next couple of hours. Just allow Him to do what He does and situations, craziness and all that, just let it go for a moment and allow the Lord just to speak to your heart today. Look, he sticks closer than a brother. Look, there's, if you're broken hearted, he's near to you. So Lord, we just thank you. God, that we can come today and we can just Spend time in your presence with our brothers and our sisters. Lord, we thank you that you're faithful to meet us. Lord, we're thankful that you receive our worship this morning. God, I just ask, Lord, if there's anybody in this room, Lord, that just needs to hear from you, receive from you, Lord, that today will be that day. God, I pray that we would be people that are open that we're not closed off, but God, that we're open to say, I invite you into my heart, into my life. God, mold me and make me more like you every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship. Thank you. 
Isn't he good? <laughs> Oh 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hey, real quick, I want to give you a few more things to shout about this morning. I want to keep you guys informed on what's going on in the jail and prison ministries. Um, we were at the prison a few weeks back. It's been probably three or four weeks ago, but in that service, I mean, God did amazing things, but we had one give his heart to Jesus, so we had a, another soul saved, amen, pulled from the dark to the light, amen, yes. And also, as we were at the jail last Thursday, we had four more give their heart to Jesus, so I, I say that's praiseworthy, amen. God's still moving and changing lives. So also, I got a, received a letter this morning. There is a, uh, another need at, the, at our local prison. Um, they're at max capacity. I think it holds 236 people. But that is a camp where people who don't have a whole lot of time, they're fixing to get released and go home. A lot of these guys, when they get out to go home, they don't have anything. When they come in, they take their clothes, they give them the prison uniforms, and they uh, donate their clothes and things. So the need is this, that some of these that are getting released aren't going to have regular clothes to go home in. So they uh, sent a letter out <clears throat> with a need for new clothes and new shoes. Say new clothes and new shoes. Not your old shoes on the back porch, but new clothes and new shoes. So... If you want to be a blessing to some of these men, they're needing those in the month of March. So I would say uh, bring those next week or within the next two weeks. If you will just bring, if you want to buy all different sizes, you know, there, there will be a need for all those sizes. So if you want to bring uh, new clothes or new shoes for these men to be released and then go home, it's kind of embarrassing when they have to be released in their prison uniform back out into society. So if they could get regular clothes, I know it would go a long ways for them. And God's moving in there, doing great things, saving souls, and uh, just doing great things all across our nation and across the world. We see God moving and doing great things. But if you want to be a blessing in that area, a blessing to that prison ministry, if you'll bring some new clothes and new shoes, we'll get them up there to the prison and be a blessing to those men. Amen. Amen. Who's ready to give to the Lord this morning? As we obey the Lord in bringing in our tithes and offerings, we make the following declaration in faith. According to Malachi 3, the windows of heaven are opening over every area of my life. My blessings will be more than I can contain. The plans of the enemy to bring destruction to any area of my life will be canceled so that I can enjoy the abundance of life that Jesus spoke about in John 10. According to Deuteronomy 28, the blessings of the Lord shall overtake me. I am blessed in the city and in the field. My children are blessed. My vocation and my investments are blessed. I am blessed going out and coming in. The Lord is commanding His blessing in all that I undertake. Every enemy that comes against me shall flee before me seven ways. This is my declaration, and my commitment is to take what God blesses me with, to bless others, and to further the work of God's kingdom. Amen. Shout praise as you bring it to the Lord. Yeah. 
deep sorrow see your light is breaking through the talk of night not overtake me I am pressing into you
I tell you, that was a pretty weak praise. If we, if we know that we're covered by the grace of God, amen, covered beneath the shelter of his wings. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. And I just, I, I want to pray right now. I just felt from the second song this morning that there was someone just right now that the Lord was say to you that I have you covered. You may feel like you're in that battle all along, that you're hopeless and helpless, but I, I just want to tell you the Lord is saying to you, <clears throat> you this morning that he has you covered. And understand this, if he has you covered, he has it covered. Amen. Uh, I don't think you got that. I said, if he has you covered, he has it covered. Well, bless the Lord this morning. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord and uh, to celebrate. We're so glad that that you're here this morning. I want to add one thing to uh, uh, what Paul is saying about Good Friday service. We're less than four weeks away now. I put a little video out this morning, so if you would go to my Facebook page and share that. If you, when you share that, if you would tell your friends on Facebook to share what you just shared. Amen? Can we do that? Can we just let the word go out because there's still... <clears throat> churches that we're not hearing from. Listen, we're going we're gonna to do this regardless, amen? amen? And I'm grateful for the churches we've got with us. But listen, our goal is to get the churches of Rutherford County together, yes. right, to love one another and to love on Jesus. So I encourage you in that. And also I put out last night a, uh, an announcement for Hannah that she is putting together some bags for the homeless. And thank you, Monty, for... Uh, for those that you're you're doing for the uh, those that have been in jail, because what Jesus said, don't forget them, right? I was sick and in prison, and you you visited me, right? And so uh, thank you for that. But Hannah is putting together these for uh, the less fortunate, the homeless, and she wants to put Bibles in those. So if you have some Bibles that you're not using, or if you want to go buy a couple uh, to give, whatever, uh, just see Hannah. And she uh, will tell you anything else she needs. Uh, and one more thing before I preach, I just want to say thank you for your giving the last couple of weeks. We asked you for a couple of special offerings, and, and two weeks ago you gave over a thousand dollars to go. I remember this week to go to Turkey uh, and Syria, where the earthquakes were, to force square disaster relief. So thank you for that. Last week, I ask you again to give on behalf of uh, uh, Joe Simmons, on behalf of getting Tracy's funeral paid for, and again, you gave over $1,000, and that was 25% of what the funeral cost. And then this past week, we had another family in the church that stepped up and gave another significant gift toward getting that paid. I say, I say we ought to thank God for that. Come on. <laughs> <clears throat> Not only thank God that it's done, but thank Him this morning that God has blessed you with the ability that you can give. Uh, I, think, I think that's worth praising Him for, right? You remember a few weeks ago, you know, a couple months ago, we prayed over those that have businesses in the church, and we pray over your families because I believe God wants us to be a church that we can give, that we can help. Amen. So thank you for doing that. Well, last Sunday, um, I, I talked with you, and thank you, Paul, but I'm going to rearrange just a little bit. Uh, I started talking about the principalities and powers here, and then I talked about distractions. Just two more right there. That one, and then, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, put one there, and yeah. I would go. We got it. And then if you want to put one more here, if you got it. So. But I talked to you about living in the heavenly places. And let me get my scripture. 
And I used Ephesians chapter 2. And let me go back to that in verse 1. And let me say thank you to those that the kind words and already people that have shared with me even this morning how God touched them and they released things last week. I celebrate that. Amen. <clears throat> I celebrate that. But again, let me go to chapter 2 and verse 1 through 7. And ye, you, he made alive when we were dead in our trespasses and our sin. So this is where we were again. Remember this. We were dead. We were lifeless. We were on our way to hell. We were hopeless. Nothing could help us. Religion couldn't help us. <clears throat> Good works couldn't help us. Embracing any set of beliefs could not help us. Nothing could help us. We were dead in trespasses and sin. But God, aren't you glad? But God. Amen. And again, in which we walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in disobedience, among whom also we once conducted ourselves uh, in the lust of our flesh. What's the word, if you have a King James Version, what's the word that is used there? Conversation? Okay. You know, for us today, <clears throat> we think a conversation is if we sit down and <clears throat> talk together. Excuse me. <clears throat> sit down and talk together. But literally, a conversation means your lifestyle. And that's what he's saying. We once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as others. So again, remember, so I'm going to invite, if, uh, you don't know, have to be the same ones, but I got four chairs here for powers and principalities. So who wants to be a power and principality? It's not quite as quick this morning because you know you got to sit here and look at the people like I do every Sunday morning. <clears throat> Thank you. Two more. Thank you, guys. So now... Anything that hell wanted me to do, that was the lifestyle I was living because I was distracted. Now, give me about five distractions up here on the front row. Thank you, guys. Well, three more. Three more. One more. One more. All right. <clears throat> so here I am. I'm dead. I'm lost. Thank you, Monty. And so everything, if you think about it, distractions are things of the flesh. And that's what I see, what I hear, what I taste, what I touch, and what I smell, right? Did I get those right? The five senses. And some would even say there's more senses than that. But that's the five that we've known all our life. But hell began to tempt me. And my senses would see things. My eyes would see things that I wanted. And, you know, there was no nothing to hold me back. Uh, some of us had some levels of hold back. But really, we were pushed by these powers of hell uh, here. And anything the flesh wanted, that's where we were living. But again, what happened? But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love of which he loved us, even when we were dead and trespasses made us alive together with Christ. For by grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness. So here I am lost. I hear uh, a message about Jesus Christ. I, I hear the message of the gospel. I hear someone tell me about a man who loved me enough that, that he bled and that he died for me. And if I will believe on him and trust him, that I will have everlasting life. Amen. Aren't you glad that you heard? Is anybody glad you heard? Come on, ask, is anybody glad you heard this morning? 
that God sent somebody by your way, whether you've been in church all your life or not, God sent somebody by your way and you heard the message of the gospel. You heard the message that this man named Jesus, come on Jesus, this man named Jesus who came from heaven, born of a virgin, right? We believe in the virgin birth, right? That that came, lived, died, laid his life down on the cross of Calvary. Nobody killed him. He laid his life down on the cross of Calvary. And then he went to a tomb, and they put him in that tomb. But we're getting ready to celebrate it uh, in a few weeks. But on that third day, he rose again victorious, right? And the tomb was empty. And I'm glad to tell you I've been in the tomb and there's nobody in the tomb. There's nobody laying there. Jesus has risen. He is alive. Thank God. And so then again, we know he walked about 40 days or 10 days. He walked upon this earth and he appeared to his disciples and then he went to heaven, right? And what did God do? We read that we're gone sit him down, amen, at his right hand and set him down because it was finished. It was done. It was over. It was complete. He said, it is finished. So now it's that life that I believed. It's that message that I responded to. And I told you last week that when I responded to the heavenly place that God had already put Jesus far up above all powers and above all principalities. And how many know the Bible says that these guys right here, that Jesus made a show of them openly. You ever had anybody where somebody was uh, stronger than them or maybe they out-talked them or whatever it is and, and they used the words, boy, he showed them up, didn't he? Well, that's exactly what Jesus did to the devil. He showed him up, right? Because the place God set him was far above all power and principality. Show me my rope there. Right there. Yep, 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 yep. So come on, Jesus. So what did you, you, you power some principalities. I got bad news for you. But you got to stand up because you've been defeated. Give me them hands. You have been bound. Go ahead, Jesus. Because the Bible says that you can't, you, you can't spoil the house of the strong man unless you first bind the strong man, and then you can spoil his house. Is that the word of the Lord? So when Jesus, even before he ascended into heaven, that he was there, he was fighting hell. Some preached that when he went to hell and preached to the spirits that were in captives, he suffered in hell. I find no truth in the word of God that he suffered. He died, but I believe when his eyes rose up in hell, hell knew that hell was in trouble, right? Every power, every principality, everything of hell was bound, defeated, and listen, and in Jesus, it was destroyed. Amen. So now, Jesus, I want you to take them, and I want you to triumph over them. Amen. I want some shouting, because that's what they did. Come on. Come on, Jesus. Do it happily. Because they came into that city when they had defeated a foe, the king would get in a chariot, keep it doing, Jesus. Amen. Uh, get them this if you had to. But amen, he, they, they would tie them to a chariot. They would strip them naked. We're not doing that this morning. <laughs> and, and, and then they would cut off their big toe and they'd cut off their thumb. And then they would take those kings through the city and they would say, look at these kings. These are the kings that tried to destroy us. These are the kings that tried to bind us. These are the kings that were coming against us. Now look at them. Amen. Come on. Come on. Is anybody happy? 
Man, y'all guys ain't celebrated. Look, I'm talking about a, a celebration. Thank you. You guys can sit down now because you're bound, right? You can untie them. You can sit down in your chair. You're done up here. You're done up here. You guys are done in Jesus. You, you basically no longer exist. Amen. Yeah, right? you're, you're, you're defeated. You're, you're done with and that's exactly what the Bible says. He triumphed. They celebrated. The people of the city, man, they, they didn't have to be told to clap. They didn't have to be told to get happy and triumph. They realized that there was the king and there was the armies that were trying to destroy them. So now that's where we are. We are now sitting with Jesus in the heavenly place. And remember I told you Ephesians 1 said, that in this heavenly place, it is basically sown with the things of the Spirit. We are blessed. The Bible again is past tense, that he hath blessed us. In this place where Jesus is, that we live our life from, we have been blessed. And all the things of the Spirit, one preacher said it like this, this is where the winds of heaven blow. I don't think he got it. This is where the winds of heaven blow. Hey, they're blowing, in the, and they just don't come occasionally. We can say, okay, man, I felt some glory today. There is a continual glory of God flooding the place, right? Because in this place, Jesus is setting. And not only is Jesus setting, but there are people sitting here that have been delivered. They've been set free. Some were bound. So I'm just going to ask you this morning, is there anyone here that has been bound by alcohol in your past, but you've been set free in Jesus, and you're willing to come and take a seat in the heavenlies, right? Is any Anybody? Yeah, come on, Kelly. Amen. Let me ask you this. Is there anybody here that's been bound by lust in your past life, whether you're a man or a woman, but you've been set free in Jesus, and you want to come and take your place this morning? Anybody willing to say, Jesus set me free? Man, I'll sit down because thank God he set me free. Come on, Peggy. Amen. Hey, we ought to celebrate the fact uh, that this place is, is filled with people that are seated with Jesus that have been set free from things in their life. How about jealousy? You know, we talk about those big sins, right? How about things that people think, well, that's just a little sin. Maybe you were you told lies. You couldn't help but lie. And you were jealous of people. But you came to Jesus, and Jesus set you free. And now no longer you're jealous of people, but you're loving people. Is anybody else here this morning like that? That Je oh, Come on, guys. I'm not talking about you don't have to be shameful if you were that way because I'm talking about that you're no longer that way. Well, I guess I'll have to sit back down here too. Amen. But how about anybody that was bitter before and you had unforgiveness in your life, but Jesus set you free? Yeah, yeah, come on. Man, this is going to fill up the heavenlies, right? So if you look at it and you think about it, now in this heavenly place, not only am I sitting with Jesus, but I am sitting here with the saints of God. And this is just a small representation of saints of God that have been set free from something in their life. And now they're experiencing something that the Bible calls the abundant life. Does anybody like abundant life? Yeah, yeah some of you do and some of you don't. But uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm thankful that the life that we have now is a life that Jesus said that in this place you have abundant life. In this place you have everything that you need. In this place you are blessed with all the blessings in the Lord. And in this place, because you're in Jesus, every power and every principality that held you bondage, you've been set free from those things in Jesus' name. Amen. So is there anybody else out there that just didn't want to come up here this morning? 
And he said, well, I, I just don't know. I, I, I just, you know, I, I don't know about this abundant life stuff. But you see, sometimes we relate the abundant life about the things that we see down here, the things that we have down here, and the things that we do down here. But see, I've got to live life down here. My life is here, but I've got to live down here until one day Jesus comes, and what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, what a day that will be. Amen. But until that day, I've got to live on this level with the abundance of life that I've received on this level. Is that making sense? Six people. Right. See, you have, regardless of what is going on down here, if you're a child of God, this is where you're seated. Because it's not saying Jesus will seat you. And it's not saying when things are going good in your life, you're seated. But the Bible says he has seated you. So if you're a child of God, no matter what your situation, you have abundant life. I love a story about an old ditch digger. And this old ditch digger lived in the slums. And there was this rich lady. And she looked over at her chauffeur one time, and she said, I want to go down to the slums, and I want to see what's going on with the outcast. I want to see what's going on with those people down there. So she gets in her car, and the chauffeur starts driving her through, and man, it's a bumpy ride. But this woman is so rich that she owns one of those cars that are so easy that she don't even hardly know the bumps. So here she is, driving down through the slums, looking at all the people that she thinks are less than, all the people that she is more fortunate than, all these people. All of a sudden, there's an old guy in an old muddy ditch over here. And he's digging in this ditch. He's got mud all over him. But all of a sudden she realizes this ditch digger is singing a song. And she wants to hear what that old ditch digger is singing. So she tells her silver, stop. She rolls down her glass a little bit. I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of the king. Through Jesus, my Savior, I'm a child of the king. <laughs> oh, and he keeps on digging. And the mud keeps on getting all over him. And here is this rich lady... That's not saying all rich people are like this. So. But this rich lady that looked at him and he is singing a song about down here he was living at a level, but she was only looking at this level. But he was singing, I'm a child of the king. That while he was living here, he was living here. Right? Right? He was flowing in this life, but he was living here. So, so that that witch lady, rich not witch, but rich lady, got out of her car, and she went over and stood near this old ditch digger, and she said, "What? You're a child of the king. You're a child of the king." Look at your life. Look at your muddy clothes. Look at what you're doing. You, you're a child of the king. Don't make me laugh. You're not a child of a king. 
You don't look like a king's son to me. Why? Look at those old ragged trousers and the old worn boots and those rough chapped hands of yours. You can't be a child of a king and dress the way you are. That old ditch digger, he just kept on singing. My father's own son, the savior of men, once wandered all the earth as the poorest of men. But now forever... He is reigning on high and will give me a home in the suite by and by. So to her dismay, she kept looking at this ditch digger, hearing the song that that he was singing. And by this time, she looked across the ditch and there just stood an old run-down shack. Didn't have a screen door on it. Just had cardboard over some of the windows, and this was the place where this man lived in his, with his family. She looked again at him and said, Listen, man, you aren't a child of the king. Look at that old shack you live in. If you were a child of the king, you would live in a palace with a beautiful lawn and with the latest pictures around your yard. While you're just an old ditch digger digging that old money ditch to earn a living. But that old ditch digger, Mike, he kept on singing because he was sitting here. And now he's saying, I once was an outcast, a stranger on the earth, a sinner by choice, an alien by birth. But I've been adopted. My name's written down. I'm an heir to a mansion, a robe and a crown. (laughs) Oh, and so by this time, she was just so amazed that she didn't know what to say. But finally she said, You say your father's a king, and you live in a shack like that? You say your father's a king? You live in a shack like that? See, that's what hell tries to do and challenge you. Your father's a king? And you live in a shack like that? Why is it it as is good as my pet's doghouse? If you were a child of the king, you would attend the big balls and wine parties we have at the king's palace. You couldn't be a king's son, so don't fool yourself. You're just an old ditch digger. But the old ditch digger, he just kept on sinking. A tent or a cottage. Oh, why should I care? They're building a palace for me over there. Though exiled from home, yet still I can sing. Oh, glory to God. I'm a child of the king. That old lady, she got back in her car and had the chauffeur drive them away. And she looked at that chauffeur, and she said, I don't see how anyone could claim so much and yet have so little. That old ditch digger leaned on his shovel and watched her ride away, and he said, I don't see how anyone could claim so much yet have nothing. Amen. Aren't you glad this morning that is a child of God that you have abundant life. You know, we live in a world that says, if you want life, do this. If you want life, you've got to enjoy this, right? This is what living is all about. If you want life, you've got to drink with us. If you want life, you've got to party with us, right? If you want life, you've got to do all of these things that the world digs. But through, I'm living here, but I'm singing, I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of the king. Listen, this isn't my destiny. This isn't my home, right? Because I live there, amen? And I'm going there, but right now I've got to occupy until I come. So see, that's where the problem for most of us sit in. You know, we we have where did I leave my oh, 
We have the abundance of life. You know what that is? That's Zoe life. That's the God kind of life. John 10 says what? That the thief has come before to steal and to kill and destroy, but I've come that you might have it more abundantly. Listen, that life means an overflow, abundant life. You know why? Because there is the bounty of heaven right up here. The bounty of heaven is where you live at and you have abundant life. Listen, if I choose to not walk in abundant life, this is why I don't walk in abundant life. I live down here. I do life down here. I work down here. I will do all of those things. All the powers and principalities are bound. I've been set free from the power of sin and the bondages of hell. But now while I'm still living down here, I still live in this flesh. And listen, Romans 3.23, and I just learned this day before yesterday. <laughs> Romans 3.23, I knew Romans 3.23. But said, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. I never did a word study on that. And it absolutely means it's in the past tense. We all have sinned. But you look at the tense of the Greek word fall short. It means that we're falling short. And that's not an excuse to sin. That's just saying while we live down here, we all have sinned. This was our lifestyle. This was where we lived. Listen, whether you wanted to come up here or not, many of you were bound by alcohol. Many of you were bound by drugs. Many of you were bound by lies. Many of you were bound by bitterness. Many of you were bound by jealousy. Many of you, and you can name all of those lists. You were bound by, but now you've been set free from. And understand, if I've been set free from something, that means it doesn't control me any longer. These powers and principalities that were here, they don't control me any longer. I've been set free. So listen, so if I sin or Whatever it is, anything I fall short of the abundant light is because that down here, I've still got taste, I've still got touch, I've still got hear, I've still got smell, and I've still got sight. But the Bible says that when I came to Jesus... I was baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. And it says I was crucified with him. What was that part of me was crucified? Not my spirit because, man, that thing's alive. Right? It was made alive. I, I have abundance, abundant, abundant life in my spirit, man. Man, I'm sitting up here with Jesus, Right? I'm a member of the general assembly of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven, right? I'm a part of that great innumerable host. Thank God for that. But I still live down here. And if I don't keep my eyes on Jesus, I start getting my eyes on things down here. See these things, not these people, but distractions start telling me, you don't need to like that person. You can't love that person. You know, there's some of you have got distractions even sitting all over this building this morning. 
because you're letting that distraction stand between you and abundant life. Which camera am I on? There's some of you that are listening online this morning that need to be sitting in this house. There's some of you that know that this is the place that God has placed you and God wills for you to have. You've let distractions get in the way and maybe there's somebody here, well, I don't like them or, or like that. You know what? Somebody said it like this. Well, there are hypocrites down there. And somebody else said, well, guess what? If that hypocrite is standing between you and God, that hypocrite's closer than God than you are. So what I'm telling you this morning is you need to get yourself back in the house of God. If this isn't the place that God planted you, you need to find where God did plant you and you need to get back in the house of God because you're in the house of God in the move of the Spirit. Yes, God can meet you at home. Yes, God can bless you in your pajamas. And sometimes that may have had to be, but it doesn't have to be any longer. And God said to forsake not to assemble together, right? Right? He said forsake not. And even more so, as the day approaching and that don't just mean to come and set your behind down in a chair some of you got your behind in a chair but your heart and mind somewhere else sometimes it's just as simple as I can't stop on my phone I gotta play I gotta see what's happening I gotta see what they said I got to see what they're doing. So I got to check my Facebook, right? And some of you are letting Facebook and some of you are letting the phone keep you out of living abundant life. I don't know this, but some of you may be letting Tammy keep you out of living abundant life. Somebody may, some of you may be letting Cheryl keep you out of living abundant life. You may be letting me keep you from living out of abundant life. Listen, that's the reason the Bible said, if there's problems between us, let's get them settled because we need to join together, right? We need abundant life. If you remember, they were what of all of one accord, right? That didn't mean they all liked blue, and that didn't mean they was all cowboy fans like me and my brother. You know, but you know, but it meant that they were coming together and forsaking everything that would keep them apart. See, that's what these distractions do, because they show you. This one may not let you forget what they said about you. This one may not let you forget how they mistreated you. This one may not let you forget they told a lie about you. I'm talking about distractions. You see, sometimes we preach holiness from the standpoint, and this is the reason that holiness is not touch not, taste not, and handle not. Holiness is not just me abiding by a set of rules, but holiness is so wanting me to have a relationship living on this level that every distraction and every sin that gets in my way, I lay it down, right? Because I'm following after Jesus, right? And I don't lay it down because of a law. I lay it down because I want him. So there's some distractions this morning. I know I'm meddling a little bit this morning, but there's some distractions that are on the TV set. A man or woman bound by lust, but watching R-rated movies that have sex all in it, that have nudity all in it. Oh, it's okay. Is it okay? You say, Pastor, is that going to keep me out of heaven? I can't answer that question. The sin itself will not. 
But will you let that lead you to a place of bondage that you turn your back on Jesus and lay your faith down in what he did and what he finished for you on the cross of Calvary? That's where the danger is. That's where the danger is. Some of you may be that little bottle. Some of you may be a pill or needle. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of things that we could talk about distractions. How about, I just can't get the words of them old songs and those thoughts. Well, why are you listening to those songs? Dear Lord, I am so grateful, and I don't say this boastfully. I say this with a heart of gratitude. I was saved when I was 12 years old, but I wandered away from God. I wanted to enjoy sin, and I never, I don't know, I guess, you know, I just know I wasn't walking with God. I experimented just a little bit with alcohol, but got so sick on my stomach, I never wanted that stuff again. I never wanted to drink a beer because it smelled like I just went to the bathroom. I experimented a little bit, huh? just a little bit. That bondage pornography get back a hold of my life. You know, I would, when I first started hanging out with a group of friends I was hanging out with, this is what they would say about me. When somebody would mention drugs because they were doing drugs and they'd be afraid to say anything around me, my friend would look at him and say, he's cool. He's okay. I wasn't doing the drugs. I was cool, though. I was still living down here with them. And I was letting them become a distraction. Young people, you need to hear this. I was letting them become a distraction for me. And it wasn't long till I started drinking a little bit. Again, never heavy, never real bondage to it. Got to smoking a little pot. And because you know what happened? Here I was a Christian when I was 12 years old, but I let distractions because I like my friends. I was cool at first, but I kept letting these distractions get in my way. And I, my, I found myself going down to their level. Listen, you can love your friends and love people, but you better be careful who you hang with. You better be careful who you let speak into your life. You better be careful who you let influence you. Is that right or wrong? But then God got to deal with my life. I can't tell you the moment I actually totally came back to Jesus. I can't. If my life depended upon it, I can't tell you that very moment. I can tell you the moment I gave my heart to Jesus. But it was almost like God began to draw me back to him. Oh, and that's the reason we need revival. There was a revival going on in this area. And I began to see that and and I, I began to want that. And I was asking God for that. And I would go to the altar asking God to baptize me with the Holy Spirit because I wanted that. But somebody was on this side saying, let go. And somebody was over here saying, hang on. And so I was hanging on and I was letting go. And I didn't get nothing from God. And then day, that day at work, and this is what I started a while ago to say I'm grateful about. God said, go home and burn every bit of your music. Some of it belonged to Cheryl. I didn't ask. I went home that day. 
I put my three dog night. Joy to the world, I put it in the trash can. Johnny Cash, I like country and I like rock. I put my smoke on the water, ZZ Top. And I burned it in the trash can. There's another preacher there. He said, you know what? You could sell that and make some money off of it. I said, God said to burn it. And I burned it. And that night I went to church. And nobody had to say hang on and nobody had to say let go. I just had an encounter with God, man. I got baptized with the Holy Spirit and it changed my life. It changed my life. See, that doesn't mean that although I'm saved and baptized... I'm sanctified. Man, I, I was sanctified when I got saved because I'm sanctified with Christ. Is that, that's what the Bible says. I'm sanctified with Christ. But I can still let distractions get in my way. Whether it's people... Whether it's things I listen to, things I read, things I watch, places I go. You see, this is where holiness comes in. See, I believe in living a pure life, but not for a pure life because I don't want, because, you know, I, I, I want him to accept me because of my standards. I just want him. So, you know what I have to start doing? I had to start dying to these guys. So distraction, you can go back to your seat. Right? I'm choosing abundant life. Right? Doesn't mean that I still, because Paul said, I die daily. I had to make choices every day of my life not to listen to the lies of hell, not to listen to the challenges of hell because hell will challenge you. You get sick. You feel pain. Well, God's not real. And you must not be holy enough or you wouldn't, you'd be healed. You go through problems. You go through loss. Well, if God loved you, if God, you got abundant life. And that just happened to you. Oh, I'm a child of the king. You see, listen, that's the reason that if I keep on holding on to Jesus, I can say all things work together for those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Why? Because in Jesus, I'm being preordained. In Jesus, I have been chosen, right? In Jesus, I have been sanctified. And if I choose to say no to distractions and no to temptation, right, then what do I do? I say no to those things. I crucify the flesh, and I say yes to Jesus. And then I'm able to walk in the abundance of life. Well, well, the next week I'm going to talk about this, but let me just give you a little snippet. You see, the Bible says in Romans 12, Therefore, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, what? You know what the problem is with the living sacrifice? Nobody? It can crawl off the altar. You know, a dead sacrifice don't crawl off the altar. There, there was none of those lambs that they slaughtered or pigeon doves or whatever it was. None of them that they, that they slaughtered crawled off the altar. Because if they crawled off the altar, they're, they're, they wouldn't be dead, and therefore they wouldn't be sacrificed. 
So that's the reason the Lord says to me, I am to present my body a living sacrifice. Because God don't need a bunch of zombies walking around. God needs people that can relate to lost people. God needs people that can go to the jail and, and, and preach to those who are in bondage. And most of the world says they're just hopeless. And they're there because they, yeah, they're there because they did something. But, but by the grace of God, there go you and I. That's not condoning their sin. That's, but yet God needs people living that can go to the jail. God needs people living that can tell somebody about Jesus. God needs somebody living that can preach the word. God needs somebody living that can stand and lead us. Are you understanding that? So God says, I want you to present your bodies a living sacrifice. See, I take the body... Because the body is quickened by the Holy Spirit. But the body is a tent. And the body is temporary. You know what? Can I teach you that just a minute? Is that that not what the Bible says in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 5? That this thing that I live in is a tent. And you understand what tents are? They're temporary. In those days, they were nomads. So they would pick up their tent, they would go to somewhere else and set their tent down. But they never set their tent down and said, this is where I'm staying. So a tent is temporary. A tent is something that wears out. That's the reason we need the Holy Spirit to quicken these mortal bodies and bring healing and bring life to them, right? But yet, while I am still living in this tent that is temporary, that is not my eternal home, my spirit is sitting here with Jesus. I'm very much alive in Him. I have abundant life. Listen, it is not something that you work yourself into. It is the gift of God. Dear Lord, I wish we'd understand that. It is the gift of God. But then I live in, again, this body that has to be a living sacrifice So there's a part of me then, the third part of man is my soul realm. Again, it's that mind, it's the intellect, intellect is your intellect, your emotions, and your will. Everybody raise your right hand. So listen to what you did. Your body did not raise its hand on its own. Your body, because your body has to be told what to do, doesn't raise his hand on his own. There's a decision that has to be made. Thank God there will be a day that I won't have to make this decision anymore because I won't be in this junk. But now I've got abundant life. I've been set free, but these things are still here. So to engage abundant life, I've got to agree with what God says about stuff. See, this, do you understand your physical body doesn't worry? It shows the effects of it. But it doesn't worry. Your spirit is alive with God. 
God is alive in your spirit. So worry, I don't believe, is coming from your spirit. Worry comes from this realm right here, this soul realm. Where you confront the world and all the distractions. And you have distractions. And there's some of them distractions are big. Are they not? They're big. Some of them really hurt. They really stink. I mean, they're really bad. So I go through these things and I encounter them in this tent. My spirit that I have abundant life in knows that I'm okay with Jesus. Lord, cover me. I'm sheltered in Jesus. But see, in this room... I start listening to the distractions and I start worrying. It's in this realm that you're going through marriage difficulties and somebody says, well, there's somebody else that would treat you better than that. I pray you never hear a Christian Taught that way. Christians ought to be trying to help save marriages. And your eye sees something it likes. Because you realize that, I, again, I, I don't have time to go there, but just look at TV. Again, as I said the other day, they don't use Bubba with a snaggle to to sell hamburgers and use cars. See, the world wants to attract our sight. Hell knows that there are needs and there are things that God placed in our life that are gifts of God. Amen or all means that I have won. But hell then wants to take and contaminate, contaminate and just mess them up. So now you're married. You're going through marriage difficulties, so you've got your distraction up here. That's your problem is your distractions. So then here... You've got to either decide that my mind is renewed by the word of God. I'm thinking the way Jesus thinks. Well, the world says go find you somebody else. The world says go get satisfied by that other person. Or that other person makes you happy. I've heard people say, well, that person would have never did that if they'd ever been saved. I totally disagree with that. Because saved people that have abundance of life, if they get their mind on distractions and they get drawn by distractions, they then don't crucify the flesh and they shut up their spirit and they side with the flesh and they find themselves in a place they never thought they'd be. So it's sheer. It's sheer. I don't have a phone. It may be my iPad. Siri's been talking to me for some reason. I never use Siri. But is that making sense? Man, I have so much to say, but I want to try to bring that to a close because, again, I'm up here. I'm seated with Jesus in this place that is sown with the things of the Spirit. But my brothers and sisters that can say, I've been set free. 
Hey, I once was bound, but now I'm free, right? <laughs> hey, I once was bound by those things, but now I am free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So I'm sitting up here enjoying the abundance of life. But I have every day got to die and every day of my life say no to those distractions. And young people, that's again, that's the reason I want to, ch I want to champion you. I want to champion our young people. That's the reason I high five them. Sometimes I try to dance with them or whatever it may be. You know why? Because I realize there are all kind of distractions that are standing in their way to draw them away from the house of God. We've got musicians up here that are well enough that they could be out in the world boogie boogieing. <laughs> but they chose to bring their talent to the house of God. And you, I, I, I champion that. Man, we've got singers that could, we've got a whole youth band that could be out there singing something else. But they're here singing, pray, I champion you. But understand that there are still distractions that hell will put in your way. And that's the reason we have to choose. See, this is past tense, guys. Please hear that. This is done. This is finished. And as long as my faith and trust is in the finished work of Christ on Calvary, I am sitting with Him. But while I sit with Him and live life down here, I've got to choose not to allow distractions and temptations. Because like I told you last week, there will be no temptation take you but such as is common to man. And God will with every temptation make a way of escape. That you may be able to bear it. Amen? So listen again. Please hear me. If I choose to not walk in abundance of life, it's because I'm letting these things distract me. Some things may be an ongoing distraction. I mean, there may be Christian wives and Christian husbands here that are, are living in a marriage that your, your spouse is lost. That's an ongoing distraction. You may have lost children. That's an ongoing distraction. You may be finding sickness in your body. That's an ongoing distraction. That's not just a temporary distraction. Some of you are living with ongoing distractions. But I'm so glad to tell you there is abundance of life for you because this is your seat. Man, th this is where you're sitting. You may not see it. You may think, no, pastor, I'm down there and I am just that old dick sticker. And I'm worth nothing and I'm worthy of nothing. But Jesus says, I've come that you might have abundance of life, that you may have it more abundantly. Man, that's what revival is. Man, when you get that, you get to walking in that, experiencing that, and then the law say, I want that, right? See, I, I saw something I wanted because there was a group of people that was hungry for God. I wanted that. I still want that. So I ask you this morning, thank you guys, you can be seated. Thank you so much. And while, you, yeah, give them a hand for this. I got one more message in this, but I, I think you guys are, are free. I set you free. But I ask you, what's the distraction in your life? How about if you don't know Jesus this morning? What's the distraction? Well, preacher, I, I've got hurt in church. And I've seen the church hurt people. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. 
And I'll just tell you, people do get hurt in church. I don't think I've intentionally ever hurt someone, but I have hurt people. And I've been hurt. Because I realize we're imperfect in the flesh. So it may be church hurt. It may be that you just think you've got to have the, the life that you're living. That may be your distraction. Maybe you're single, that boy, girl, man or woman won't love you if you come to Jesus. I, I, again, I don't know. But Jesus has asked the question, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So I ask you this morning, what is your distraction? And is your distraction enough to go to hell for? And, and that's the bottom line, is it not? You see, the sin that will send people to hell is not, again, as I've said over the years, not drinking, it's not drugging, it's not running around, it's not lying. The sin that will condemn a person's soul to hell is rejecting Jesus Christ. So what is the choice that's keeping you from giving your heart to Jesus? I ask right now the very spirit of conviction, the Holy Spirit, will grip your heart. The musicians are going to come around and And this altar is ready for you to lay your distraction down. Lay that giant down and say, no longer you're going to keep me out of a relationship with God. I want eternal life. If I close my eyes today and live no longer, I want eternal life. It's sure for you. Jesus did it. Jesus died for you. And then I'm going to ask you, child of God. If you're here and you want to know Jesus, I want to ask you to come over here. If you're a child of God this morning and you're, you've got a distraction and you know you've got a distraction that's standing between you and really obeying God. There's things you just not let go of. There's people you've not let go of. There's situations you've not let go of. And every time you think about going deeper with God, that thing hits you right in the face. Why keep dealing with it? Because Jesus has already given you the power to defeat every bit of hell and every bit of sin. It is already defeated in Jesus I've got to choose to lay those distractions down. So I ask you this morning as they, you stand and as they sing, if you're a child of God and you've got distractions, you're ready to lay down, I want you to come and stand. I, please, you know, I'm not going to keep you from bowing, but I, I, I want to ask you not to bow if you would. I want you to come and stand on this side. If you need to know Jesus, you're lost, you're backslidden, away from God over here. But from here over, if you're a child of God and you're ready to lay things down and lose them and let them go, I'm going to give you some practical things to do next week of how to walk in that. But I want to ask you this morning, are you ready to say no to distractions and yes to Jesus? And again, the only way you renew your mind and make sure your mind lines up with your spirit if Jesus is alive in your spirit as I said last week, you read the contract. Stand with me. What is... Let me just ask you this question. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you this morning? 
I want to say right now that in Jesus' name, I declare you free right now in this moment from every distraction. I declare you free this morning from every lie and everything of hell that will keep you from hearing the Holy Spirit. You are free right now to choose to say yes to Him, to walk with Him, and to get rid of those distractions in your life and give them to Jesus. So what is the Holy Spirit saying to you? Now you must be obedient to God. Sing, guys.
And Lord, I know that every distraction, every bondage, every attraction, Father, that is holding these back from really engaging the abundance of life that you have for them, Lord. God, Jesus, you defeated them on the cross. You rose victorious, and Calvary was enough. And Lord, I say that those things are bound right now. And whatever we loose upon earth is loose in heaven. So, Lord, right now, I declare each one of them. I declare them free. Come on, I declare them free. Lord, you gave us the authority. Lord God, whatever we loose on earth, Lord, is loose in heaven. Lord, I loose them this morning. I declare them free. Lord, I declare them free. Lord God, Father, when the Son sets free, He's free indeed. Bring the music down just to me. I want to declare to you standing here that the Lord is going to create new attractions for you. Oh, hallelujah. I sense this. I really do. That as you come and say, Lord, there are distractions that have been in my way, the Lord is going to create attractions for you. And those attractions are going to be toward Him. And I will say to you that every attraction that the Holy Ghost puts in your life is going to far outweigh the draw to those distractions that are trying to keep you out of abundant life. But this morning, would you receive the gift of heaven that is for you this morning? And that gift of heaven says, I create a hunger in you for the things of God. I create a desire in you for the things of God. Oh, I create a longing in you to be touched by heaven. And every time that distraction gets in the way, that longing for Jesus, that desire to know Him is going to make every one of those distractions run away in the name of Jesus. Come on, that is yours this morning. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Yes, yes. And it's those desires that the Holy Spirit is planting in each of you right now. Yes. You want to just raise your hand. Pray in the Spirit over them, guys. If you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, you came forward this morning to be loose from distractions. Would you just begin to pray in the Spirit right now? And I will say to those that have never experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that there is a, there is a language, there is a swelling that is taking place inside your stomach, inside your gut right now. And you feel that rising in you right now. You feel words that you want to speak, that are words that you don't understand. Oh, I remove those distractions that are keeping you from speaking 
blessing, allowing the abundance of the river of life to flow through you even now. I say to you, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Loose it and let it go. Loose it and let it go. Worship, guys. Come on, worship. Let's sing. Distractions down. You're getting out of his way. So he used to say, just let go and let go. Just let go and let go. Come on, I'm gonna say it again to somebody gets it. Let go and let go. Hallelujah. Just let go and let go. Hallelujah. Just a moment. Still somebody. Still somebody that needs to say yes to Jesus. You say, Pastor, I just don't understand this stuff. Let me tell you something. Neither did I. And I grew up in church. Night I got the baptism. I've said this before, but just to, again to reinforce what I just said, I didn't understand it. And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, Go to your Sunday school teacher. And tell her you feel something and you don't understand it. 
At that time, she said, it's the power of God. I feel it all over you. Man, she let go and started shouting. One of those dear old Pentecostal shouts. <laughs> oh, I didn't understand. But I've been learning about it ever since. And I'm still learning. So you may not understand. But you know there's a longing in your heart this morning to be born again, to know Jesus. And I have eternal life. They're going to sing one more verse and one more chorus. As the Holy Spirit says to do elsewise, I'll be finished. This is for you this morning. Sing, guys. something in my walk with God has just been so reinforced and things I wished I'd have known 30 years ago see hell will try to convince you that sometimes when he puts temptations and distractions in front of you that you want those temptations and distractions but you don't because you're not this tent so you're that spirit man that is alive right here. You're just living in this tent. Oh, hallelujah. And I've had to learn what hell may lie to me about my flesh. That's not me. Oh, when my flesh is tempted, that's not me. Oh, when my flesh is want to be distracted that's not me that's my tent my spirit man wants to serve God and I'm choosing more and more by the help and grace of God to walk there to walk here and not down here on this level and I'm so gracious to God that it's not by Ricky because this tent would sure be distracted. So it's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Celebrate that while Paul comes around. Amen. Amen. You may have... Uh... I just want to say this real quick. You may have seen me over here talking to some of the youth, but there's some young people all scattered out, and I was telling them, and I wanted to tell this to all of you, it's kind of scattered out. It's, this is not an adult service. Yeah, that's good, Paul. It doesn't just pertain to the adults. Absolutely. And I was telling them, I want you to feel free that if God is speaking to you, I want you to go to the front. Don't sit back just because you think, oh, we'll have our service on Wednesday. This is our Grace Chapel, everybody service. So don't, don't hesitate if you feel like God was talking to you in that moment. If there's distractions in your life, you say, hey, because young people, you're dealing with the distractions as Pastor Ricky was talking about. Don't be afraid to respond. 
in these services on Sunday morning. Amen. All right, look at your neighbor and say amen one more time. Look at your other neighbor, say amen. Look at the person behind you, say amen. All right, listen, just real quick as we're, we're leaving, uh, just a few announcements. Um, remember, if you're going to be volunteering uh, for our Good Friday service, just go out that glass door through the next door all the way down to our youth building. And then remember, um, remember our Good Friday service is on April the 7th. And then remember, if you would have any old Bibles you would like to give to Hannah. We love you, church. We'll see you Wednesday at 6.30 and back again Sunday at 10.30.